and welcome to my channel. My name's Nick and I teach data science and Python tutorials here and over on my website at datag.io. Today we're going to learn all about filtering data in Pandas, and trust me, there's a lot of different ways to do this. So let's dive right in. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to be notified when I release new videos just like this one. Pandas offers a huge variety in terms of how you can select data. This can often lead to a lot of confusion for beginners as well as novices using Pandas. So let's find out just how to select data. All right, let's get coding. Like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of different ways in which you can select data in Pandas, and this is one of those less intuitive pieces that you really have to understand about Pandas. I've provided a data set down in the description below if you want to follow along. And to begin with, we'll begin by importing Pandas, as I've written out here, and loading this data set. Be sure to use the parse dates argument to parse in the date column to be read as dates. Next, we'll print out the first five rows of this data frame just to see what we're dealing with. So I'm going to go ahead and run that now. This is actually the same data set that I used in my pivot table training which you can watch by clicking the box up here. Okay, so we have five columns. One is a date column, a region column, a type column, as well as two columns that have numerical values called units and sales. The first and probably one of the key ways in which you can select data in pandas is to select it by a column value. Since we're talking about data science specifically, this is really important and quite fundamental to understand. If we wanted to, for example, only identify the rows where the sales value is greater or equal to than 300. We could do this by writing df and then opening square brackets df again and then in the next square brackets write sales and then here we would write our condition. Here we're saying return the entire data frame where the sales column belonging to the data frame df is greater than or equal to 300. So if we run this cell now, we can see that all the values in the sales column here have been narrowed down to only those where the value is greater than or equal to 300. Now, you might want to do the exact same thing, but on multiple conditions. So for example, you might want to return values where the sales are greater than 300, but the units sold are larger than 25. You might also want to run this with an OR statement where either the sales are greater than 300 or the units sold are greater than 300. So we'll explore both of these. So to write an AND statement, which we'll cover off first, again you're going to write DF and follow it with an open square bracket. Now because we're going to have multiple conditions, each of the conditions needs to be wrapped in regular brackets. So we're going to open these here and then write DF. We're going to want to filter for any sales greater than or equal to 300. And then after that bracket, we're going to write an ampersand and again an open square bracket where we then write our second condition. So here we're going to write units greater than or equal to 30. So what this is doing is it's evaluating whether or not both of these conditions are true. And for any of the records where both of those conditions are true, those records are included in our filtered data frame. So we can see here that all the values, all the records that have been returned have rows where the units are greater or equal to 30 and the sales are greater than or equal to 300. Now what if we wanted to use an OR statement for the exact same purpose? We could write a very similar statement. In fact, I'm just going to copy this one down here because they are that similar. All we're going to do is replace the ampersand with a pipe symbol. And this specifies to Python that either of the conditions has to be true, but it doesn't have to be both of them. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. So when we run this now, we can see here that there are some records that have been returned where the units aren't greater than or equal to 30, but the sales are, and that's why these records have been returned. One of the really cool things about Pandas is that you can also filter on dates. This gives you a ton of freedom, but we'll start off with a very basic example where we're only filtering down to one single particular date. So similar to before, we're going to write df, open square bracket, df again, and now we're going to filter on the date column. And so say we wanted to return only records for May 1st, 2020, 
we could write a double equal sign, 2020, 0501, and return this. So here we only actually get four records returned, and all of them have the date equal to this date. But say we wanted to also return any that happened on or after May 1st. We can do this as well by using the greater than or equal to symbol. So we're going to write df, df, date, and greater than or equal to May 1st. 2020. When we return this, we get a lot more records here. In fact, we get 669 records, and all of them happen on or after May 1st, 2020. One of the other really cool features that Pandas has is to be able to take a date and parse out different attributes of it using the date accessors that you have available. What I mean by date accessor is that each date in Python isn't just this string up here. So for example, this here isn't a string, it actually contains a lot more data behind it. So using pandas, we can actually access the different date values within it. We could parse out, for example, the weekday, we could parse out the months, just the year, and then filter based on that. I'm actually going to create another column here that only includes the month of that particular date. So for example, if we wanted to do this, we could create a new column by writing df and month equals df date. And then we'll follow this with dt. And we'll follow dt by writing month. So if we print this out now, what we'll actually get returned here is the month number with January being one. So we can see here that it's actually pulled out the July and encoded it as seven here and similarly with September and so on. So we don't actually have to create this column to be able to filter on it. What we could also do is simply write df date and then use the date accessor directly here. And so say we only wanted July returned, then we could type in seven here and bring this up. And Notice that we haven't filtered on the month column here. We filtered directly on the date column, but we've used the date accessor attribute here to be able to parse out that we only wanted July's dates returned. And so this is incredibly powerful to be able to filter out dates belonging to a particular year or to a month or to even a weekday that you're interested in. Now, say you are interested in filtering down to a specific string. Say you're interested in a particular salesperson or a particular region, which we're going to look at here now. So for example, if we wanted to only look at the north region, we could use df, df, region, and then type in double equal sign north. So what we get returned here are only values pertaining to the north region. Now, say you had a long list of items that you wanted to filter down on. So, for example, you had different names or different values that you were really interested in looking at. You could, of course, write the OR statements that we had identified before. So, for example, if you were interested in values from the North and the South region, you could write a selection statement that has the OR statement in it. So let's do that first. So we're going to have df, and again, we'll use the regular brackets here for our first condition. We're going to look at values from the south region as well as the west region. So we're going to write west here, and then use the or operator here. And again, fill in the other region that we wanted to look at. So when we print this out, we can see we only get values from the south region and the west region. This is fine if you only have two values, but say you were interested in 10. Writing all of this out is incredibly cumbersome, even just for two values. This is where the isIn method becomes incredibly powerful. So to rewrite this in a much easier way, we'll just write df, df, region, isIn, and then we'll follow the, the regular brackets with a list here. So we're, we wanted to look at south and we wanted to look at west. So when we print this out, we actually get the exact same data frame return that we had before, but we saved ourselves a lot of code. You could, of course, also define this list beforehand. So say we wanted to call this list regions and then we can just throw our variable name into here, and this actually returns the exact same thing. 
Now we'll take a quick look at how to use regular expressions to be able to filter down data in pandas. So the way that we can do this is actually using the contains method and then inserting our regular expression directly within it. So if we wanna filter down to anything that ends in th, the regular expression for that is gonna be th and a dollar sign. The dollar sign meaning that the th has to come at the end of the string. So let's filter down our data frame where we write region and then the string version of that contains and then in quotes we're going to write th and dollar sign. So when this is returned we can see that this only includes north and south and leaves west and east out of the equation here. Now what if you were interested in looking at null records specifically? So you can use the isNull method to be able to return the entire data frame where there are no values in any of the rows. So we can do this by writing df and then only a single df. Now remember we're looking at the entire data frame so we're not actually going to tell it to look at a particular column here. We're just going to apply the isNull directly and we want it to look along a particular axis. So we're going to use the any method here and apply axis equals one. If we wanted to return records where there was no values in a particular column, we can again use the as null statement. What we're going to write is df df and type. Now we're going to use the as null method again and see what gets returned. So since we have an empty data frame returned here, that means that there aren't any empty cells within the type column. Now say you were interested in only returning non-null records. So we can do this by using the not null method, of course. So we'll write df df and say, because we know there are null values in the units tab, we'll write not null. And so now let's take a look at the query function. The query function is quite interesting because it takes an expression that is evaluated as either true or false, but that expression is almost plain language. So it can make filtering a little more natural if you're just getting started. So say again, we wanted to look at only columns where the sales were greater or equal to 300. We could write df query and then sales greater than 300, greater than or equal to 300. So what this returns is actually the same data frame that we had before, but we've used a more plain language approach here. The last piece we'll take a look at is how to use the loc method in pandas to be able to select data. I have a full tutorial on how to use loc as well as iloc over on my website, which I'll link to down below as well to give you some more reading material. Loc is one of those key ways to be able to select data in pandas. So for example, again, if we wanted to filter down to only showing records of east region, we'll write df.loc, and now we'll use square brackets here, df region equals east. Now this is gonna return all of the records from east region. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to follow me in other places, I'm also on Twitter at DataGIO, where I tweet a lot of different Python and Pandas tips throughout the week. You can also check out my ebook, An Introduction to Python for Data Science. I'll have the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of new videos, hit subscribe and then click the little bell icon beside it to be notified of when I release new videos just like this one. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll happily answer it. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.